Episode 11, Miracle at Rush Valley. Rush Valley! Oh yeah, this is Winry's heaven, right? Damn! Mm. Remind me again why we let ourselves get dragged out into this heat. Oh yeah, we're not gonna see the teacher this episode, are we? I've never seen an auto male model quite like this before. <sighs> hey, stop that! Hey, hold on a second! I'm getting on a personal space quitting! No, no, don't, don't do that! Ah! This is why I steer clear of auto male engineers. Did they take his shirt off? They really like auto male. Come on. What did you lose? My shirt. Only the thing that proves I'm a state alchemist. My silver watch. And that too. <laughs> a pickpocket around here who likes to target tourists. Do you know how I can track down this Panina girl? I got pickpocketed once and it was a horrible experience. I was at a music festival and I was holding my friend's hands to get through the crowd and literally all it took was someone bumping into me for like a split second and my phone was gone. And then I had no way of contacting them because my phone was gone. Sucked. I hate pickpockets. Could that be her? Yeah, I have a feeling that's her. Something tells me. <laughs> yeah, don't mess with Ed, man. He's crazy. How'd you do that, mister? I'm an alchemist. Want more? That actually is really amazing. Wow, so cool! I've been waiting for you. Damn, Al. Now, why don't you hand it over? My watch. She have an automatic leg? My other leg's got a 1.5 inch can, and what do you think of that? Pretty cool. Come back! No way! Why don't we see if you can catch me? <laughs> no way I'm letting her go. No, I love her automail. Not until I've had a closer look at that automail. Right, of course. You want to be more careful not to strain your outfitty. That could be the reason why his growth is stunted. Hey, shut up! Oh no. Oh, wait, are you telling me if my auto mail was lighter, I'd grow taller than this? It is a possibility. Whoa, brother, you're so big! <laughs> Actually, it looks great. Are you having a baby? Why, yes, I am. Do you think, would it be alright if I touched your tummy? <laughs> Go right ahead. I also sensitive. I pray for the health of your child. In this world, <laughs> you're in great danger, lady. Run. <laughs> Go somewhere without all this. I was in a train accident when I was a kid. It killed my parents. I wound up losing both my legs in the wreck. I couldn't even walk anymore. And I had nowhere to go. That's when I met Mr. Dominic and everything changed completely. Sounds like she has a very similar story to Winry, right? Winry's parents were killed in the war and then she met the grandma lady and learned auto mail. So I guess they're going to hit it off. I'm going to pay him back somehow, even if it takes me my whole life. Of course, he's never willing to take any money from me, so that makes it a bit more difficult. That's why you're a thief? You're so grateful to him, you should clean up your act and stop picking pockets! Tell him, Henry. Instead of stealing trinkets from hapless tourists, stand strong on those two legs that he made for you! Stand wow. up and get to work! You know what? You're right! That from was easy. On, I'll work honestly to pay him back myself. There you go. Can't get it to open. Let me see. It's been sealed up using alchemy. Why would he do that? I think I have a pretty good idea why. Oh no! Is it porn? Let's have a little look at what Ed was hiding. Probably a picture of his family. Don't forget, October 3rd, huh? year 11. What is it, Winry? Nothing. I'm going to ask Mr. Dominic to apprentice me again. There's a lot going on. <laughs> Mr. Dominic seems like the kind of person to express his love through action rather than words, which is kind of a recurring theme for Winry, right? Hughes said something about how people sometimes don't express their feelings and they just expect others to know. I'm guessing October 3rd is the day that everything went down with the uh, human transmutation. The bay! Uh, the bay! The bay is a type of horse. What about it? The... The... The baby's coming! The baby's coming! Full Metal Alchemist. Paninha. Dominic. Right. I said it's coming! <laughs> what do we do? The doctor's not here! Henry, when we take charge. <laughs> we are just going to have to do it. Have to do what? Deliver it. We are going to do this. Ed and Al, go and get me some boiling water. Sure, Henry. 
Nina, go find some towels and hurry. Dad, Roger. Right now, the only choice we have is to defer to her knowledge and the sheer force of her nerve. She does have a lot of nerve, for sure. Winry, you, you can, can do, do this. this. Give me a hand in here. Sure. You got it. I'm kind of relieved with Winry because I think when I first saw her, my, my feeling about her was she was going to be sort of a trope. Like, I'm dedicated to you forever, but I act like I hate you. But she's so much more than that. She seems like someone who has a lot of self-doubt, but who doesn't allow that self-doubt to get in the way of doing what she needs to do. Like, she's always able to rise to the occasion. And she's very thoughtful. Like, she's actively thinking about how to make herself better, how to be understanding, how to help people. She's self-sacrificial. Like, we saw her stay up for days on end to help Ed. And now, in the time of crisis, when everyone is freaking out, she decides she's going to be the one to handle the situation and do what she thinks she can do, which is so cool. Everyone else is sort of, like, weak and floundering around. But even though, obviously, this is terrifying, she's able to sort of get a handle on the situation. So the more I see Winry, the more I like her. She's so much more than the, the trope I feared she was. No, when it really counts... I can't do anything. But when we can. I know we're not big believers in God. Mm. Maybe he could help us. Just once. <laughs> it's nice that they care so much. Oh, oh that blood. I can't do it anymore. What's going on? Hey! <laughs> I was scared for a second there. But good. The way this show has me paranoid. Awesome! It's a real life baby! Awesome! Awesome, awesome, awesome! Really? Awesome? That's all you can think of to describe this? Uh, how else should I describe it? This is the birth of a new life. Alchemists have worked for centuries, and we're still not able to do that. A person creating Ow. another person. You've got to be kidding me. Now you're lumping in alchemy with the miracle of birth? There's a lot happening in this scene, and one thing I think is really cool is Ed praying to God while the baby was being delivered. I don't think it's connected to his actual beliefs, but it's still nice to see him let his guard down a little bit, you know, just hope. Another thing is Ed talking about childbirth through the lens of alchemy. Like, Winry kind of made fun of him for that, but I feel like maybe there's something to that. I wonder to what extent the laws of alchemy are going to be used to make a claim or make some kind of philosophical point about the nature of the universe and about humanity. Because the way we've gotten it so far is that everything has a cost, like... For something to be created, something must be destroyed, etc. And as I've spoken about before, there does seem to be sort of this contrasting force in the universe where things are in decay or things are always sort of vulnerable or in a state of decline, yet the universe is growing and expanding and testing new things. There's this vague question in it for me, which is kind of like, maybe existence is greater than the sum of its parts, if that makes sense. Like, it's not just creation and loss, it's like net creation. And I can't help but wonder if the childbirth thing and Ed's reflecting on that is somehow an indication of like an actual lesson behind alchemy that they'll learn. So do you think there's anything else you're gonna need me for now? Yeah, there is. Do you think you could pick me up, please? Huh? It's humiliating to be carried That's by cute. a boy who's smaller than I am. <laughs> I had to dig that in, huh? I saw it. The engraving that's inside your pocket watch. <laughs> ow, 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 that really hurt! Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm so relieved. I'm glad it's not a thing. It's private. An admonition to myself. I hate to admit how weak I am, but I had to give what happened that day substance and then carry it around with me as a reminder. Wow, I'm shocked to hear him articulate that. What are you crying for? Oh, she was there for the house burning. Oh, they're all there. You two won't cry. Someone else should do it for you. Don't you think? Seeing your resolve inspired me. I want to do more, Ed. Wow. I want to hone my skills so I'll be able to make you the finest quality auto male prosthetics. That way you can continue your journey knowing you're as strong as you can be. I'm going to try again. I'll ask Mr. Dominic to make me his apprentice. Wow, Winry really is the best. She's so cool. She has such a good framework for thinking about life. Like, I feel like her eyes are open to the pain of life and what's going on and the circumstances of the people around her. But the way she internalizes it is so nice. It's so refreshing because she uses it as motivation. It seems like Winry's always looking. Like, she's just looking for 
what she can do to be the best Winry, and it's so awesome. And I feel like there's a different color to it than with Ed. Like, Ed has a lot of those qualities too, but he sort of, like, sees things and is motivated by, like, this negative view of himself, whereas Rinri is not. Admittedly, she hasn't done the things Ed has done, right? So it's maybe a little bit easier, but she's been through some hard stuff, and she still ends up being a really, you know, pure, hardworking person. Winry, Mr. Rito said he wanted to talk to you for... Did anybody thank Winry for her, what she did? Nina. Hmm? Hey, Why'd you go and do that? You just punch her? Well, I'm kind of glad. Pickpockets are terrible. Well done. Sometimes even adults can't take being present at childbirth. Winry is an adult. Thank you. Please, sir, there's, there's a way you can repay the favor. Me. Oh my goodness, now you're gonna make me blush. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you could make an exception and take on an apprentice? I don't take on apprentices and that's that. Come on. I won't stop you from coming once in a while to see my grandchild. Same goes for the tomboy. If we miss this train, there's not another one for three days. Ooh, now you two be careful. Oh, I want her to come along. I guess it makes sense why she has to stay. And don't forget Damn, to I'm gonna miss her. And keep her posted. And make sure to steal that old man's technique so you'll have something even better for me the next time I see you, okay? So I can grow taller. Damn, why is this sad? Well, that's it. They're gone. They'll be back. Wow, so I had the feeling at the beginning of this episode that it was going to be filler, but it turned out to be so much more. It turned out to be a lot of development for Winry. I definitely misinterpreted her character in the beginning. I thought she was going to be more of a supporting character, but it actually feels to me increasingly like she's one of the main characters. You know, like her journey is really important too, it seems. The show's spending a lot of time working on, on her development and learning how to handle people and how to be a generous person without taking too much of a burden on her own shoulders in a way that's unhealthy. So it's really interesting. It's been fun to watch her character unfold sort of and, you know, be fleshed out and be given real life. And this episode also, I guess, will have some larger plot significance in that she's going to become a better auto mail maker or engineer or whatever. So we'll have to see where that goes as well. I'm guessing this is not the last time we're going to be in this town with her. All right, that's the end of episode 11. I'll see you guys very soon for episode 12.